Welcome to another episode of Times Square Kung Fu. We're back and better than ever. We've just been very busy doing extra features for releases, which we are truly blessed. And this is going to be an amazing episode. I am Frank and Balboa, a.k.a. the Shogun Supreme. And Peter, uh, uh, well, let him know. <laughs> I'll just chime in while you're talking. I'm Peter Gligowski, uh, associate editor over at Flixist. And the majority of this video is going to be about the uh, legendary film, The Double Crossers. The with Double this, Crossers. With a fancy new Eureka release that... Uh, is way better than the movie deserves. <laughs> Damn, Peter. It's, it's an interesting film. I dig it, no, but we're going to get into it. Yeah, oh, my God. And we also going to talk about Queen's Ransom and a man, came, a man called Tiger 3. Jimmy Wang Yu joint. And, no, you know, Jimmy Wang Yu has his fans. <laughs> and once again, thanks to MVD for sending us these review copies. They send, they send these um, previous two titles over the summer, but we were working on the box set, so let's get into it. So first up on the docket is The Double Crossers, the 1976 film directed by Jung Chang-hwa, who is the director of not only King Boxer, but The Skyhawk, which is one of our favorites of that era. So imagine my surprise when this movie was a total dud. <laughs> Every possible oh, manner. <laughs> Let me read the description for you and then we'll break it down. As listed on the movie database, Detective Lung is investigating the murder of his father and discovers his father belonged to a syndicate of smugglers. He finds out the murderer used to be his father's business partner and that he's now living in Hong Kong under a new name. Lung tries to lure Wang to Bali where he hopes to get his revenge. And I mean, essentially, I guess that's it, but the hell if I got that from the movie. Look, Peter's a hater, okay? Let me tell you. Let me tell you guys something. We have fun in the first hour. It's great. I mean, the first You're like gonna thirty see, minutes. <laughs> no, the first hour, bro. Come on, let it rock. That's you know. But we're not gonna spoil the film. You see, um, tr um, typical action trademarks from the director where he likes to freaking put the camera on like you know first person view, and then you see the punch come in. You're gonna see some the action that he's known for. But the thing that caught me and Peter our attention is the goddamn music. At first we were like, yeah, yeah. It's some dope seventies um, funk. The fashion is awesome. You're gonna see Lenny Kravitz in this film. Well, we're not kidding, but I felt the film should have focused on what they were presenting at the start of the film. Like the first hour, it was very grounded, kept us there. Um, the music, the, the characters, you know, like trying to like, when they got the money, and all that, I was like, all right, cool, we get in there. Now these gangsters with William Chang in it are going after them. But after a certain part, you're like, okay, this happened. And then it goes, it, it completely jumps the truck. When the they go, where is it? They go it, to yes. Indonesia? They go to Indonesia, right? Yes, in Bali. Yeah, they go to Indonesia. And there you have, I, I'm not kidding. You have no idea what's going on. I'm like, what is the point of this? Because there's a point in the plot where like, it's not about the money no more. It's about, you know, oil and w what is happening here. I was like, <laughs> yeah, at one point then, they take money from uh, some gangster and he even says to his associates, I don't care about the money. But then the plot becomes about getting the money back. And I was just like, I thought you didn't care about the money. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, but overall we had a blast on that first so we were laughing there was some cool shit going on in this movie in the beginning i mean it's i had said to frankie at one point I'm like this is bad but it's entertaining because yeah it's just funny uh, the action's kind of crap but uh you know it's it's got a b movie kind of charm to it but I don't know. I don't even think it's like an hour. It's got to be roughly halfway through and it just completely yeah, halfway lost through. It. it just felt longer than it should. Um, one thing, though, I got to give him credit just flares off. There's some impressive, there's some impressive stunts, especially that motorcycle chase scene where they actually kept homeboy falling down. I'm like, yo, and come on, Peter, the undercranking in the apartment. 
oh the my beginning god. of the film. Oh my god. Yeah, they hucked a grenade in the room and everyone's like, get out of here! I was like, what the fuck, man? I don't know. And, I mean, it's always nice to see Michael Chan, so... Be himself. Yeah. <laughs> so... Be himself. It's not a total waste of a movie, but this is very much... Like, I don't know. I want to say it's like a legacy release where... I am almost certain Eureka had to release this to get some other movies in their catalog there. Because I don't know why you would even bother to really put this on a disc. Stop hating. Look. <laughs> I honestly believe just for the first um, 40 minutes, 30 minutes, because Peter's right, it just felt longer. It's entertaining to watch. Especially with friends, because we had a blast. Is that cheesy... 70s joint. I'm sure the commentary is good and obviously as per usual with Eureka like the picture and audio quality are very good you know the, the movie looks pretty solid for how shitty it is. <laughs> but look it has a great commentary by Frank Benj um, has one with um, Mike Leader and Arnie Venema and those two guys um, when it comes to films like this they give some insight especially with Arnie because Arnie used to live in Thailand so he probably hit that region a lot. So you're going to get some insights on the cultural references that's happening throughout the film because it's well, it's well shot. Yeah, it's just a fascinating period because this was during the time when Golden Harvest, once Bruce Lee passed, they were trying to, you know, cash in on those type of films that Bruce was doing. For certain. It's definitely... Big Boss was really good. Let's do that again. So yeah, definitely. Um, I recommend it if you're into that 70s style vibe because the way things work now you save on shipping so if you have money to burn and you're like man i need i want to get another title is is interesting but I'm, I'm telling you it's not taking acquired taste yeah i would only recommend it if you are really deep into hong kong cinema and want to learn more about that because the supplemental features are what make the package the next one we're going to talk about is a queen's ransom this one jimmy wang Yu was in it because somehow i was such in the zone what did i mention peter earlier that jimmy wang Yu was in all three of them yeah in all three of them but He's it not. felt like he should have been in it because these films are very similar and we're gonna get into it next up on the docket a queen's ransom the lovely movie directed by Ping Shan Shi, starring Jimmy Wang Yu and George Lazenby, of all people. James Bond yeah. himself. <laughs> the description for this is a quick one. A Hong Kong mobster sister is working with authorities on their investigation into her own brother's plot to assassinate the queen. That's it. Yo, that's all you need to know. No, I'm being real. This thing has a crazy cast. Angela Miles in this joint. Jimmy Wang, you got the prettiest white woman in here. I mean, you get 70s sleaze, the music, Angela Miles with a gun. <laughs> it feels like a it feels like a Godfrey Ho film. That's what this is. This thing is makes no sense. And I mean that in a good way. You're gonna get hokey, good old western type action. It's it's wow. This this yo, if you guys um you know, do miracle medical marijuana. Yeah, highly recommend it. That's what I gotta that say. Shit in. Again, this is one like uh double crossers where the special features make the package. But here's the thing: the special features in this, it's ridiculous. Especially it's a lot of insightful stuff here in the commentary. Because we have an amazing person in here, which I was shocked, and I told you this. Michael Worth does commentary on the export cut. Frank Dedge does commentary on a theatrical cut. So you're going to get a wealth of knowledge, especially what was going on during that time. This film is what my uncles, my father, my stepfather, my mom's boyfriends at the time, <laughs> you know, saw in Times Square. This is, this is, yeah. If you love Dolomite films, you love that good trash, just get it. I, I, there's, there's nothing I could say. This thing is just like, wow, they actually made this. I know at least it was the last of George Lazenby's films with Golden Harvest. He had signed on to do the movie that became Stoner with Bruce Lee. And then, you know, obviously Bruce Lee passed away, so. Yep, and Angela, legendary Mao, is in that joint. But um, this is one of the films that I highly recommend just for the special features. And again, if you're into that whole 70s vibe, especially those Italian crime thrillers. Well, this is not a thriller. This is just 
we're just having fun and we we, we want to be around pretty ladies and look cool definitely check it out because i will from hong kong cinema appreciation shout out to you he loves this joint when i saw this movie again i'm like yeah this is some will shit right here <laughs> <laughs> you know but definitely checking out it's it's a thousand percent vibes and the next one jimmy wang Yu's joint once again <laughs> a man called tiger this one is interesting now this movie came out in 1973 and is reportedly supposed to have been Bruce Lee's third movie. It's directed by Lo Wei and I mean it even has Maria Yi in the cast which makes me think that there is some validity to that claim. But the plot summary is that a young man suspects his father's suicide was actually a murder committed by gangsters. Using his expertise in martial arts, he gets himself hired by the gangsters who he suspects are responsible for his father's death. And again, simple setup. Jimmy Wang Yu cleans house. It's a decent film, <laughs> all things considered. It's just that it's hokey. And here's the problem with this film when I first saw it. I didn't know years ago that I saw a massively cut version of this film because when I saw it, it was the 70 minute cut version. This package comes with the uncut, it's like extra 30 minutes of footage. And it makes the plot less confusing, but still confusing. And it's almost very similar. That's why I got it confused with double crossers. Dad gets killed. Jimmy Wang Yu goes out there. And what makes the plot confusing is the four ladies. I'm sorry, but those four ladies could have been two. And the way the women are using this film is the same situation what happened in double crossers, which I'm not trying to spoil. Because I was like, what was the point of this? They should have just kept going with that individual. If you're a Jimmy Wang Yu fan, this is good for historical standpoint, because after Bruce Lee's death, you could see they were trying to do more modern films. And I mean by modern, period for the time, from the 70s. And the action in this one is actually better than Queen's Ransom and Double Crossers. You get to see Jimmy Wang Yu with his hand-to-hand -hand combat style. It's fun. Confusing as hell though. I'm like, I don't even care no more. I'm just, I'm just here for the vibes. And all three films has one thing in common a banging goddamn soundtrack. Even if it's a bit repetitive in Double Crossers. <laughs> Dude, they, they comb the hair music and it's, it's just weird. Like you hear one theme song and then it cuts and then another, the villain song. Everybody got theme songs. <laughs> we already spoke about that film. But overall, out of, the th out of these three movies, this is the best one. This is the second best because it's fascinating. So you can see what they were trying to do out there to market. This one deserves an Oscar. Because I think it just deserves for the a... first 30 minutes or so. I think it deserves a Razzie, although fuck oh, the Razzies. God, man. <laughs> but it's just interesting. So if you love 70s, funky, vibe, cheesy, and beautiful woman. Oh my God, the, the ladies in these films. The cheesecake, yeah. Especially in Queen's Ransom, ooh, you're gonna see some, mm. <laughs> It's R-rated mm. for a reason. Yeah, but um, we're gonna wrap that up. I highly, I'm gonna keep it real, cause that's what we do here. If you love, you know, films from um, East Asia, especially what was going on during that time, pick it up because the commentary makes up for these films. Even how cheesy it is, it is an acquired taste. I don't recommend this to everybody, but if you are part of this new wave, this golden age that we end and all these films being restored, definitely pick up because you're going to learn a lot about Jimmy Wang Yu, William Chang, and what was going on during that period of, you know, Hong Kong and mainland China and Taiwanese films, because it's a fascinating period and it's going to make you love and seek out other films that you would never um, thought of. So, and plus, these films, I won't be surprised if you end up digging them. You're going to see what was going on also in the West, especially like um, Jack Hill films. So we're going to put the link in the description from MVD. They've been amazing to us. As, a, as always, like, share, and mother effing subscribe. <laughs> Until the next one. Peace.